This is a little Bedini motor that I've been experimenting with for a while. Uh, let's get it running here. It started out as a one coil SSG motor, had eight ceramic magnets on it. Eventually I switched to neodymium magnets. I wanted to see if it would run the same and it did. The only cha other change I made was back the coils out a little away from the magnets and then I saw the Lindemann book that had the wheel in it the motor built on a 20 inch wheel and it had uh, one coil uh, I guess it was a my fairly little coil but it had multiple windings in it and of course it was using multiple transistors and when I looked at that circuit I thought well that's kind of inefficient using all those transistors and uh, so I decided well maybe I can work on this circuit a little so eventually I added two more coils you can see this has three coils on it there standard Bedini bifiller coils with about 650 windings. I've got charging capacitors that you can see down here and they're discharging once per revolution with this switch here. There's one magnet on the top of the wheel that is discharging into the charging battery. Right now it's a uh, it's a 12 volt motorcycle battery as you can see I'm running on a 9 volt battery and uh, this is what it's putting out it typically runs about uh, 25 milliamps and uh, that's showing the voltage on the the battery right now. This is an old motorcycle battery that I hadn't used in about five years. It had about 6.4 volts on it when I first started charging it. But as you can see the charge is coming up on the battery. I did numerous runs with a 9 volt battery charging another 9 volt battery both with alkaline batteries and uh, rechargeable batteries and the runs came out about the same. I usually stop the run after about three to three and a half hours because the charge battery was reading nine and a half to ten volts and I didn't want to destroy the batteries. But then I would swap the batteries and repeat the run and I'd get the same results. So it was really putting a real charge on these batteries because uh, as I ran I would monitor every half hour the run voltage, the charge voltage, the RPM. Uh, this uh, will actually, in the current configuration, it'll run about 400 RPM. Uh, well, I got to. Well, it's running pretty good right now. And, and this is the circuit, hopefully you can see this. This is the circuit I used, I started out with, with the three coils. As you can see, there's uh, one trigger coil. These are the run coils, these three coils. And I'm using two secondary coils as output. And it's a typical transistor circuit there. And then another thing I tried doing was using a Hall Effect switch. So this is the similar circuit, but I've used a Hall Effect switch here in place of the transistor circuit. The reason I did that was because the innards of the Hall Effect switch seems to look very similar to that circuit that I had in there. And the, the the motor actually ran slower 
I had the Hall Effect switch mounted right here and it was uh, very positional. If I moved it too much to the left, the motor would run backwards. I moved it to the right. You had to find the sweet spot and it would run fine, but it would run about a third uh, slower than it is now. The good thing about it was it was almost self-starting. You just had to touch the motor just to get it in motion and it would start running and slowly pick up speed up to its maximum speed. As I said, its maximum speed was much slower. And uh, the next thing I did was try increasing the number of magnets to 12 magnets. And it ran a little bit faster, but not as fast as it was running when I had my own transistor circuit. So I think what's happening here is the pulse is actually much shorter when you use this Hall Effect switch there, and it just wasn't enough time to get the, the push out of the uh, electromagnetic coils there. The next thing that I did was try replacing that reed switch and I didn't like the reed switches because some of them only lasted a couple of hours so I put a Hall Effect switch on the ground side of the charge battery you can't put it up on the top because the way this Hall Effect switch works is it provides a ground when it triggers and it looks like internally that ground is kind of tied to the one in the rest of the circuitry but it works fine if you put it on the ground side of that battery and you can see the Hall Effect switch right over here and that's where I had formerly had the reed switch. So eventually what I did was change back to my old transistor circuit and I left the Hall Effect switch there instead of the reed switch and I put in bridge rectifiers on the two output coils. So as you can see it runs and seems to be charging up a 12 volt battery just fine. Uh, that's the that's the voltage and the circuits putting out right now this is the voltage across that battery, the 12 volt motorcycle battery. Let's see what the speed's doing now. I don't know if you can see that from the lighting in here, but it's over 400 RPM right now. And it seems to have no trouble charging a 12 volt battery while running on a 9 volt battery. One thing strange that I've noticed, and I'm sure it has to do with the circuit itself, but the output varies based on what I'm trying to charge. When I was charging a 9 volt battery, it was only putting out about 10 volts. When I put a 12 volt battery on there, it's typically 13, 14 volts on the output and this circuit actually puts out a lot more than that if I open up the the circuit so that it doesn't discharge into the battery which it's doing once per resolution the voltage across the capacitors quickly climbs it'll go 20 30 40 50 60 and usually that's when I shut it down because these capacitors are only rated at 50 volts and I don't want them to blow up in my face and I made this video just to document this little motor and what it's doing before I take it apart. I've gotten a 20 inch wheel now and I'm going to build a motor using the 20 inch wheel. But I'm going to use the same coils and circuitry that I have on this motor. So thanks for watching. I hope these circuits that I've shown you can inspire someone to take this to the next level.